Hey, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Gabe Morenci, who's here for a six-pack of future picks to make you some money this holiday season. So, Gabe, let's begin in the NBA. The Toronto Raptors are a, well, not strong enough favorite at all to win the Atlantic Division. What's going on here? Well, I'll tell you what, Greg. I think the Raptors should probably be the third choice uh, to win the NBA title, uh, let alone the third choice within their own division. Really? Come on, guys. Listen, you look at look at all the injuries that the Raptors have had uh, so far this year, and they're still right there. In past years, the Raptors have never really cared about seeding all that much because they'd been to the playoffs uh, before, and they had never won. Now that they're champions, they get it. And uh, the Raptors also understand that they need home court advantage uh, moving forward if they're going to be successful in the postseason. You look at the division that they play in, the Boston Celtics got off to a great start, but there's always drama waiting around the corner for the Boston Celtics. And uh, you know there's always an injury or two waiting around the corner for not just the Celtics, but pretty much everybody in the association. The Philadelphia 76ers, come on, man. They're flakier than a drunk dude outside of a 7-Eleven. Flakier than a croissant. And we're, you're going to bet on these guys to win the division. They got a ton of talent. They're just not consistent enough. The Raptors have been beaten down. They've never really had their starting five on the court, yet they're still playing great basketball. And incidentally, have a better record than Kawhi Leonard's Clippers do. We're getting plus 475, not just like 475. You tell me 475, I'd be like, to what? To win the Eastern Conference? To win the freaking division? Come on, man. Great odds with a defending champion Toronto Raptors that don't get any respect. So we'll take this no respect card and actually make money off it. Raptors win a division plus 475. Let's win some money with the Raptors plus 475 to win this division and those flaky Sixers. Ignore them. The Raptors, the defending champs, have a good shot to do it again, at least when it comes to the Atlantic Division. Up next, let's stay in the NBA and let's go to another division. We go out west where the Denver Nuggets are minus 175 to win the Northwest Division. Nuggets have been hot as of late. Why do you like Nikola Jokic's team? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Greg. Normally when playing a future, I don't want to lay money. I don't want to you know, play anything that's minus. But the fact of the matter is, this is a, a two-team race here. This is between Denver and the Utah Jazz. I think there's much more upside with the Denver Nuggets. I, I think if you take away the Clippers and the Lakers, the Nuggets are the third best team in the Western Conference. I was all over the Nuggets last year in the playoffs, and I thought there was a, a chance uh, that they could potentially go on a pretty deep run. They're still a little playoff inexperienced, uh, but they're also a very deep and talented basketball team. They quite frankly underachieved a little bit earlier this year. I think they believe some of their own headlines, as Coach Malone uh, was concerned about, starting to come together right now uh, for the Denver Nuggets. They're a dangerous team. Meanwhile, uh, you look at the Utah Jazz. I think Utah are a little bit overrated. And Utah are also, they have older players. They have injury-prone uh, players. The Denver Nuggets just have more uh, upside uh, than the Utah Jazz do. I don't like laying minus anything when it uh, comes to a future and I have to wait a couple of months to get my money back. But I'm not confident, Greg, that the Denver Nuggets will win their division. Gabe rarely takes a team that is minus money to on a future bet. But here, with the Nuggets, this one's too good to pass up. Take the Nuggets and post Coach Malone and take them all the way to the bank. Let's leave the NBA and head to the NHL, where the St. Louis Blues, they're in a good spot to win the Central Division. According to you, Gabe, how come? I don't like this. I love this. Don't walk. Run. Run. You better be in line when I get to FanDuel and I see you in line. You're going to say, hey, what are you betting on? I'm going to say the St. Louis Blues. You're going to say, me too. And you're going to say, thank you in about three, four, or 16 months' time because the NHL season is pretty long. Uh, but I'll tell you what, the St. Louis Blues guys are a hell of a lot like the Toronto Raptors are in the NBA. Do you ever hear about the St. Louis Blues? Do people talk about them ever? No, they talk about every other team all the time. The St. Louis Blues are the defending champions, and they're every bit as good this year, if not maybe better. They also have a chip on their shoulder. A lot of people think like the Blues are some sort of one-hit wonders, and last year was some sort of fluke. Remember, guys, they were the best team in the National Hockey League from January on uh, last year. Uh, this year, a little bit of a slow start, but not really. And what I like about the St. Louis Blues is they're still one of the best teams in the National Hockey League, like right now, even in the standings, like right now. Uh, yet, they're unhappy. Uh, they're not satisfied with the way that they've been playing so far this year. 
the Winnipeg Jets are good, but the Jets are too inconsistent uh, to string it together for the entire season and win this division. The Colorado Avalanche are a fun hockey team, but they're also a young hockey team. They just don't have the pedigree and the experience. They don't know how to win uh, like the St. Louis Blues do. The St. Louis Blues are actually in first place uh, right now as we speak. I'm getting the defending Stanley Cup champion, St. Louis Blues, who have a chip on their shoulder and who are only getting better as the season goes at plus money to win a division, not even a playoff prop to win a division. I love the St. Louis Blues. You won't be singing the Blues after you take the Blues. Blues win a division plus 200. The Blues winning the division plus 200, as Gabe said. You're not going to be singing the Blues. You're going to be singing whatever cheers you up this holiday season. Probably some Mariah Carey. That's okay. You'll win some money on the Blues if you bet them right now. Moving on, Gabe, let's go to the MLB, where the New York Yankees are the story of this offseason, signing Garrett Cole to a record-breaking $324 million deal. That's enough to catapult them as World Series favorites and catapults them to someone you want to bet on. How come? Well, I'll tell you what. I was hoping to give you guys some uh, XFL uh, futures, uh, but the numbers aren't out yet. Keep your eye on the Dallas Renegades. Oh, well, wait, wait. We got time for that. We also have time uh, for Major League uh, Baseball. I'm really looking forward to the start of the Major League uh, Baseball uh, regular season. You might be thinking, come on, Marancy. Uh, we're in the middle of mid winter time right now, and you're giving me a baseball future, and uh, you're going to give me this obvious baseball future? Well, yes, I am. Yes, yes, and yes. Take the New York Yankees to win the World Series. I did some late-night shopping, all right? Well, everybody else is buying other people presents and worried about the holidays and shopping for shoes and Pelotons and everything else in between. You know what I'm doing? I'm looking for value. I'm looking for value in the overnight hours. And I compared pretty much every book, all right? Every book. I literally checked, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, different books last night. Could not find a better number than plus 430 that FanDuel has for the New York Yankees. All right? This number is only going to go down. All right? The Yankees are going to win a division. You know, check. The Yankees are going to be in the playoffs. Check. Once they're in the playoffs, anything can happen. I totally get it. Uh, but the Yankees are that good. The number's only going to go down. And plus 430 is a great number, guys. Uh, you know, compared to some of the other books uh, out there, and it's not even close to plus 430. This is another situation, Greg, where this is out of my, this is sort of out of my DNA, not something I would do that, uh, you know, I want to bet on something seven, eight months and have to wait for it. Uh, but as I get older, I understand it's a great stock. Plus 430 is a great stock for the New York Yankees. I'm not going to guarantee you the Yankees are going to win the World Series. All right, Garrett Cole signing doesn't guarantee they're going to win the World Series. Garrett Cole is just on the Astros. They did not win the World Series. But it pretty much guarantees that they got a damn good freaking chance <laughs> to win uh, the World Series. They're going to be right in the mix. The Houston Astros, now that they've been exposed for being the Patriots of Major League Baseball and being the cheaters that they are, I think the Astros are going to regress a little bit. Plus, they lost uh, Garrett Cole. I'm a Los Angeles Dodger fan. The Dodgers aren't winning the World Series, all right? Dodgers are overvalued. Washington, are they really going to repeat? Uh, no. You look at uh, the landscape of Major League Baseball, it's the Yankees' time. You're not going to get better odds than plus 430 right now. Cash it. Um, go to the window. Play it. You'll be cashing it. The New York Yankees, it's just about the value right now. You know that they're the best team on paper. You know that this number is going to go the other way. So right now, take the New York Yankees at a solid plus 430. Let's move on, Gabe, to college football. Specifically, this week, college football playoffs begin. And we start with the Oklahoma Sooners. They're taking on LSU. This game total is 75 and a half. It's a good one between uh, Oklahoma, LSU. Who do you like? No, 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 Greg. It's not a good one. Like Tony the Tiger uh, says, they're great. This is a great game. This is the best college football playoffs that we've ever had. Normally, it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah, yeah, Alabama, probably Alabama versus Clemson. Hell, we saw it three years in a row. Well, we can guarantee you that's not going to be the matchup uh, this time around. So we've got the Oklahoma Sooners uh, here not getting a lot of respect, uh, guys. They're getting 13 and a half points. Now, I understand that people look at Oklahoma and you don't think they're going to match up against an SEC team. Don't forget, Oklahoma have been in the playoffs the last uh, two years. They didn't lose either of those games against Georgia and Alabama by more than 11 points. They lost by six and by 11. Now they're getting 13 and a half. Uh, but with that being stated, uh, we're looking for Stone Cold Steve Austin locks here, all right? 
and how I feel the best way to approach this football game, Greg, is by taking the over. Uh, they say that defense wins championships. Well, whoever said that doesn't watch college football. All right? You look at the college football playoffs, who's the number one scoring team in college football? The LSU Tigers. Uh, they also put up the most yards. Who's the fifth highest scoring team in college uh, football? The Oklahoma Sooners. They also put up the second most yards out of any team in college football. So, you know, we essentially have two of the best offenses in college football going head-to-head here. You know, I don't think either defense is well-suited to stop each other. Let's not forget, Jalen Hurts played at Alabama, right? He's 2-0 and in his career against LSU. Jalen Hurts is going to be able to bring a little confidence to the Sooners that, you know what, guys? These guys ain't special. I played against these guys. I beat these guys when I was with Bama, and we're better than Alabama. I think Oklahoma comes into this game as sort of a dark uh, sleeper, but I think the safer bet is to go over 75 and a half, kick back, and enjoy the fireworks, man, uh, between t- uh, both teams are going to be getting into the 40s uh, in this game. First team to 50 wins, baby. Give me the over. I also like the Sooners, but, yeah, the over's the better pick. Sooners could be a good pick, but the clear best pick this weekend it is over with two fantastic offenses. The Heisman winner, Joe Burrow, against Jalen Jalen Hurts. It's going to be a fun one in the college football playoffs. There is another college football playoff game that we're going to get to, and this one features the Clemson Tigers, the Ohio State Buckeyes. This is a good one, too, Gabe. Who do you like? Well, this is another one. And, you know, you think of Ohio State, you don't really think of them having an explosive offense. In this sense, 48.7 points per game. All right, um, when you add it all up, they're right there as the top offense in college football. That's what makes it so good. These are four awesome football teams. You know, really, they're, they're, they're great. Each week, the numbers sort of bounce. Oh, no, now they're the highest scoring team. No, no, now they, they're at point two a little bit more. We've got Ohio State and Clemson. Come on, man. I got goosebumps literally and figuratively right now. And I hate Ohio State with a passion, and I'm not a Clemson fan. But I love good sports, and I love good coaching, and I love good football, and we're going to have all of the above. Speaking of coaching, Ryan Day, head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes, was upset uh, that they didn't come into this uh, as the uh, number one ranked uh, football team. And he said, well, if there's a better football team in the country, I'd like to see them. Well, uh, Mr. Day, meet the Clemson Tigers because they're a better football team. I find it amusing that last year people were ready to uh, make uh, Trevor Lawrence the National Football League most valuable player. Oh, he's better than 25 quarterbacks in the NFL right now. But now the narrative is Clemson are no good because they didn't play anybody. Best coach in college football right now is Dabo Sweeney. Uh, Best recruiting classes on a yearly basis right now is Dabo Sweeney and the Clemson Tigers. And, uh, oh, yeah, uh, Trevor Lawrence might look like Steffi Graf, uh, but uh, he don't play. Uh, like Steffi Graf. Actually, she played pretty damn good, so I guess he does. <laughs> the booming serves. Give me Trevor Lawrence, man. They they shut down and shut out Ohio State a couple of years ago in the playoffs. I don't think it's going to be the same thing, but as good as Fields has been, all the talk about the competition level that Clemson has faced, uh, Justin Fields and Ohio State have had it pretty easy, and I don't think he has faced the defense and the schemes um, like the Clemson coaching staff are going to come up with. Best college uh, coaching staff in football, by far the Clemson Tigers. Give me the defending national champion, Clemson Tigers. Love this bet. All over the Clemson Tigers here this weekend against Ohio State. Ryan Day in a huge, huge spot in his first season as the head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Dabo Swinney's been here before. Let's see if he could do it again. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up. Get all those bets in now. You need some money. Christmas shopping. It's, we're running out of time. So get to it right now. For Gabe Marenzi, I'm Greg Sussman. Good luck on your bets, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.